Hi everyone, Ollie here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm a third year medical student on the grad entry program at Warwick Medical School. Now this isn't going to be a full length video, it's kind of an addendum to some of the interview videos that I've done before. And it's just going to be on the topic of ICE or ideas, concerns and expectations. It's something that I've alluded to in some of the videos previously without ever going into too much depth about what I actually mean and what these concepts are for, which is what this video is going to be about. Before we get into that, I just need to deliver the preamble on why this is really important. Increasing numbers of medical schools are choosing to make use of what are called simulated patients. That is to say, a role PlayStation featuring an actor who is pretending to be a patient. And you as a candidate will have to interact with them in some way. And it's often ultimately pretty unclear what to do. The feedback that I get from people indicates that they find the lack of certainty in this situation very uncomfortable. Of course, this will be the same for virtually everyone, but it would be easier if we had some structure from which to work. In the mock multiple mini interviews that I run, for example, there is a role PlayStation featuring a patient and your job as the candidate is they've come into the GP clinic and you have to find out as much as possible as you can about what they want, why they've come to the GP and try and work out as much of the medical situation as you can without needing to know any specialist medical knowledge. And there is of course no silver bullet if you face a station like this because they could be testing completely different things. There are multiple attributes that a med school might want to know about and many, many of them are well tested by sitting you in front of a real person and getting you to talk to them. It could purely be about your empathy, your communication skills, your resilience, your problem solving, any number of these desirable traits. And it's also the case that the actors might have been given a scripted personality. That is to say, they'll either be maybe very helpful or in the worst case scenario, not very helpful at all, not very forthcoming with the information that you need to get out of them. And it's this scenario that we need to prepare for. The onus is on the candidate, you, to get that information out of them. But if we get really lost, a useful solution for this problem actually comes in the form of ICE, ideas, concerns, and expectations. These are three very open questions that are always asked in a modern medical history. It's absolutely drilled into you at medical school. And they're really important and useful because they allow a patient to use their knowledge to inform your medical judgment essentially and guide their care where appropriate. Now, of course, in a medical school interview, you're never gonna be required to take a formal medical history. That would be pointless. But actually, in much the way that I've introduced the spikes model to you before for breaking bad news, and I've since found out that people have used that spikes model to great effect in their medical school interviews, which is amazing. I think the ICE framework can actually have value for medical candidates, purely because they're open enough questions that it allows an actor to prompt you and get you back on track. So how do we actually use ICE? It's genuinely as simple as asking the questions, and here are some ways in which you might do that. So the first part, ideas, allows the patient to come forward with any solutions they think they might have as to discovering what's actually going on. Do you have any ideas about what's going on here? Is there anything that you think might have caused this to happen? And why do you think this might be happening? These are all obviously three similar variants on the same question, but crucially, they all feature the patient as a noun in the way you ask the question, which makes them involved, places them at the forefront of the answer that you want. So if they have a rash, for example, they might be allergic to something, whether or not they're aware of that and have come into contact with it somehow. Could be due to an infection, maybe some sort of insect bite or parasite, some sort of new skin condition, it might be autoimmune. Basically, if there's a crucial element to the history that you've missed, either through lack of technique or simply chance and not having asked the right questions, this might prompt them to allude to it. Even if they don't tell you directly, they might drop some helpful hints. Secondly, concerns is all about their worries and fears. As I hope you're aware, one of the most important features of medical treatment is not simply dealing with the pathology or the disease, but dealing with the person as a whole and addressing whatever problems they have. And these concerns are often, maybe more often than not, actually about completely non-medical things. It's about when can I go back to work? How long before I can drive again? 
will I be able to make it to my daughter's wedding? So my favourite way of asking this is, is there anything you're particularly worried or concerned about? What's bothering you the most about this situation? Or is anything on your mind at the moment? Obviously we've become more and more open as we ask those questions, but none of them are completely medical. They give enough space for the patient to voice their main concern or concerns, plural, whatever they happen to be. Then lastly, expectations is simply about outcome. You and your patient or your simulated patient actor might have completely different ideas about what's going to happen. They've come into their GP thinking they'll need antibiotics, an injection or an x-ray, and you think that there's a completely different problem that needs a completely different investigation. This quickly and easily identifies the goals of both parties and allows you to lay it all out on the table and potentially come to some sort of compromise. So what were you hoping the doctor would do for you today? What would be the best outcome of this consultation for you? Or maybe what did you expect would happen when you came to the doctors today? And that's it, that's how you do ICE. Now, obviously, just to reiterate, in the context of your medical interview, you will not be dishing out medical advice. It's incredibly, incredibly unlikely that you'll be asked any medical questions at all. If you're asked anything like that, your response is, I'm sorry, I don't have that level of training yet. I'm not qualified to answer your question, but I can communicate anything you want to know back to the doctor, and I'm sure they can answer it for you. However, if you get completely stuck, and you're in the situation of needing to find out a bit more about their situation, whether it's medical or not, ICE might help you in making some headway or at the very least allowing them to prompt you and just get you back on track. So that's all about ICE guys. Thanks very much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe. Don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com for more helpful medical interview tips just like this. And I'll see you in the next one. All my content is provided for free, but there are two additional ways that you can contribute financially if you would like to. The first is by buying me a coffee at my Ko-Fi link in the description below. Secondly is using my referral link in the description to get 10% off your first year of Complete Anatomy 2020, my favorite 3D anatomy education tool. Take care guys, and I'll see you next time.